Hello everybody, my name is Sam Harkin. It is... Whoa, it's 23 to 2. I should be wrapping up for bed, but at this rate I'm going to be pulling an all-nighter. Uh, so welcome back to Song of Sire. Uh, what happened in the last episode? Oh yeah, we um, showed that Sire is probably a demon. Um, and one thing I would like to point out is that, uh, yes, Song of Sire, uh, about a boy falling in love with the, uh, a, what is probably a demon, who looks like a cute girl, not to be confused with uh, the recently reviewed Dance with the Devil about a girl who falls in love with demons that look like cute boys. Different things. Clearly. Uh, and I'm just happening to engage with them in the same time. Anyway. Uh, duh, 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 duh. When she arrives at Saka, Saki Saka house, Umi feel, first takes a deep breath to calm herself. I really don't know why I had to waste like a minute just so I could make that joke. Uh, her anger does not vanish entirely, of course, but at least now she can hear herself think. While waiting a response from the intercom, she looks over the patch of yard that she can see from outside the gate. Even Omi is normally one to complain about others housekeeping, but this is going too far. Okay. Grass is growing wild, and there are piles of dead leaves scattered everywhere. Oh, well, you haven't seen anything yet, dear. It doesn't look untended. It looks like an uninhabited ruin. It's still light out, but every window has its storm shutters tightly sealed. Omi guess they've been closed since morning. What kind of life is Fuminori leading? Even if he's li living alone, he can't li neglect his housework forever. And is it just her imagination, or does something stink like rotten meat? It couldn't be coming from the yard, could it? God. There's still no response, so she presses the buzzer a second time, and a third, and a fourth. Finally, after this has gone on for over ten minutes, Omi loses her patience and opens the cover of the intercom. Okay. As she expected, the power has been disconnected. Okay. Perhaps Fuminori has a good reason for shutting out the world, but Omi can only see it as lack of respect for others. Her anger rekindled. She pushes the gate open and stomps through the yard to the front door. Oh, great. She's going to see just, like, the entire uh, living room spray-painted or something. Or just, maybe it's actually covered in guts. Maybe it's, like, Bizarro World. So, like, all the paint looks like pig guts, but all the pig gut guts look like paint. That would be a good way to make <laughs> for very creepy circumstances. I thought I was eating a bagel, but I was actually eating an aborted fetus. Oh. Given the state of his intercom, she doubts that Fuminori will respond to a knock, so Omi decides to simply open the door and go in shouting. And if the door is locked, she'll just have to... Oh my god, this is going to go badly already. Surprisingly, the do doorknob turns easily in her hand, and the enraged Omi finds herself throwing the door open wider than she intended. Oh god, here we go. Her nostrils are instantly assaulted by a choking stench. Oh my... I just realized how amazingly terrible will it be if we just find... It's not like spray-painted purple, but it's just like liquefied... Babies, just everywhere. What is that smell? As Omi stands petrified on the threshold, the cowbell hanging on the inside of the door chimes loudly. A moment later, uh, he's going to come in and be like, What the fuck are you doing here? Whoa! What? Welcome home! Omi can't believe her ears. The voice she just heard could not have been human, yet its intonations were too complex for any animal she can imagine. Is someone there? She she calls out to the end of the hallway from which the voice came. There is no response. Instead, she hears the sound of something soft and wet flopping its way deeper into the house. Oh dear. I don't know how I'm supposed to do that with a southern accent. Doubt, 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 doubt. Oh my god. 
she's gonna be like a legitimate demon. She's oh my god, but it, if it's bizarre world, well, does that mean that she's gonna be the Lovecraftian monster? I mean, that would explain, you know, the whole thing where it looks like the caps lock have, is having a fucking sh- seizure in the middle of her trying to speak. Um, finding it difficult to place a meaningful image to the voice she just heard, Omi stares blankly at the empty vestibule. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. There's nothing there, not even Fuminori's shoes, which can only mean he's outside somewhere wearing them. The house should be empty, but then what was that voice just now? Oh my god. Oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> Somebody's gonna get fucked up! Uh, her anger has vanished as if it was never there. Nevertheless, Omi sets foot into the hallway, leaving the door open so the cowbell won't ring. I'm nervous that there's gonna be a jump scare or something. If there is, I'm gonna be pissed because I got a. I went into this so I could get away from the jump scares. Uh, the floor creaks, setting her nerves on edge. This, like, this is the first time I'm actually tense with this game. Omi herself isn't sure why she's acting like a burglar, but something tells her she should make as little noise as possible. Great, we can be nice and quiet. The potency of the stink inside the house makes the whiff she caught outside pale in comparison. It's sickening, like rotting fish guts. Has Foon been left a spoiler in the kitchen? Yeah, this is bizarre world stuff. Like, like now she's the one who's like s- seeing and hearing and smelling Lovecraftian things. Or maybe it's also Sai. Maybe Sai also smells really badly. Can't yeah, they put them the outer right on? She hears a bubbling sound up ahead, oh god. Stepping gingerly on the creaking floorboards, Omi wakes her way to the end of the hallway. She finds rooms to both sides of her, one lit, the other dark. She chooses to look in the lit room, oh god. No, no cool. It's the kitchen, lit by what must be the only window in the house not covered by a storm shutter. Let me turn the audio down a bit. Yeah. Just in case something pops out. The sound she heard was the pot boiling on the stove. Oh, okay, that's better. And on the chopping board next to it, next to it lie a lies. Yeah, whatever. Lies a but, uh, butcher's knife and some half diced carrots. Perfectly normal household scene with the light of the setting sun making everything the color of decomposing fruit. Well, that's a very specific color you went for there. Something is wrong. Who was cooking here? And where did they go? Is anyone here? Omi calls, regretting it immediately as she realizes that her voice is shaking. And also, you've told uh, the Lovecraftian demon thingy where you are. As her words echo vainly through the silent house, she begins to feel foolish and defenseless. Suddenly, she feels something cold seeping through her pantyhose. Oh my god, what? Oh, wow. She timidly... uh, Her fingertips come away with a viscous oil, olive green slime, like the filthy water from a tank long clogged with algae and dead fish. The whole floor is covered with it. It must be the source of the stench. Oh my god, don't follow it. Don't follow it. Umi now wishes she had worn her shoes inside. Man is bedamned. Oh no. Oh, she's still alive. And she looks back ruefully the way she came. She realizes that her current position is not visible from the entrance. This kitchen must be where the strange voice came from. Oh my god. Oh no! You're dead. The next room is probably the den. As she expected from the closed storm shutters, it's pitch black inside. Oh dear. Omi wants nothing more than to flee this house, but that would mean turning her back to the darkness. And that she simply cannot bring herself to do. Oh my god. Suicidal. Oh dear. Moved by some irrational impulse, Omi sets foot in the den. It's too dark to see anything, and the stink is far worse than before. She slides her hand along the wall, feeling for the light switch. Feeling it much sooner than she expected, she flips it on like her last hope. Oh god, here we go. Oh Jesus. Colors. So many colors. I knew it! You just look fucking psychotic spray paint shit everywhere. But luckily it isn't liquidized children's, you know, positives. Oh, here we go. I say it is. <laughs> I. Oh, God. 
the purple of entrails, the brown of rotten meat, the crimson of fresh blood, the yellow of fat. These colors and more that cannot be described cover every inch of the room in a maddening array. The colors say all that needs to be said about the painter's hatred, malice, and insanity. Well, I mean, it's more just the insanity. Wait, but then where did he get this from? Did he, like, actually kill someone? Or did or did Sire kill someone and then, like, blend them and then be like, Hey, paint the wild with death. I mean, it is a pretty color. Except for, like, you know, all the, the, the murder that's involved. Oh, my God. Omi's legs give out from the shock, sending her to the floor. Slime immediately soaks through her jeans. It's cold tendrils dripping up his legs and crotch and... Her neck. What the fuck? What do you mean, her neck? What is happening? Her hand flies to her neck where it's greeted by another drop of chili slime. Oh my god. Above her, something is dripping down onto her head. Oh no. It's Saya, isn't it? Making perhaps the worst decision of her life. Omi looks up. Yep, that sounds like a bad decision. Okay. Wait for the thing to pop out. The predator clinging to the ceiling, poised to leap upon his prey. She sees it in every detail. Oh god! Her mouth and nose are sealed before she can scream. Her belly is torn apart as something enters to feast on her innards. Well, this is the creepy gross stuff that we were talking about. Damn. Oh, shit. But at least now I know that there's probably not going to be any jump scares. But at the same time, but by the time she fears any of this, Omi has already gone mad. Well, I mean, I thought she'd be more than mad. I thought she'd be also dead. But, I mean, you know. Oh, wait, unless she now has the crazy... Or is she... No, she's just dead. Yeah, I think she's just dead. <laughs> I knew it! I knew she was an evil bastard. I bit the bullet and tried to take the train. But the rush hour crowds were so bad that I had to get off halfway and walk. Oh my god, is he going to walk in on her killing her? Or is, or is it just going to be like, I got you more pain? Or is it going to be, I got you more delicious dinner kind of stuff? It's going to be gross and awful at one point or another. Uh, I'm running pretty late. Is Saya worried? I hope she's not mad. <laughs> oh, dear. When I enter the yard, I realize that the front door has been left wide open. Oh, that doesn't look very wide open to me. Light from the living room is seeping out into the hallway, and I hear what sounds like someone smacking their lips. There's also a tantalizing fragrance, and it's so bizarre, our world. It's like, oh, I love the smell of blood. This is how they're just going to be like, oh, I'm just going to kill a whole bunch of people. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I thought I was just playing whack-a-mole, but I feel like I've taken like a hit of coke or something, so I guess I'll keep doing it. Uh, is it Sire? I consider calling out to her, but decide to enter in silence instead. Oh my god. Something smells strange, though not unpleasant. The aroma is quite soothing, in fact. It reminds me of Sire's hair. Uh, see, I thought it looked a lot prettier in normal vision, apart from, you know, death. Uh, at first, I'm surprised what I see in the living room. Oh god. The floor is covered what looks to be some kind of grass. It's probably the source of the herb-like smell. And there are fruit or vegetable-like balls of varying size scattered everywhere. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. That's a compromising uh, look. So, uh, so it turns around, her eyes wide with surprise. She then looks away sheepishly like a child caught in some prank. What are you eating? Uh, this is, um, well... She stammers, so flustered that I suddenly feel bad for sneaking up on her. Mm, well, I mean, you know... Remembering that she has never eaten in front of me before, I realize that she must be quite embarrassed. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, firstly... Even if she wasn't eating like a person, she's eating globules off the floor. So, I mean, you know, you, I, or, is, or is he going to be just like, I love you too much to, like, ask questions. Um, okay. Can I have... Oh, don't, don't. Oh, don't take us down this path. 
actually do because you know I'm into gore and stuff but still that's oh god I scoop up the closest fruit thing and pop it into my mouth ignoring size attempts to wave me off even she's being like no this is weird oh no that's how they make it gross and awful they just kill people and he's just an unintentional cannibal oh no no! Oh my god, this is becoming like fucking anime Hannibal. That's amazing and terrible. Oh, what? Okay. It has a strange texture. Soft and pliable, like a peach or a pear. When I bite into it with my back teeth, a succulent juice fills my mouth. Combined with a sharp, strong fragrance, it's unlike anything I've ever tasted. Oh my god. How did you make this? What did you use? She's not gonna say. It wasn't hard. I just took it apart and melted it a little bit to make it easier to eat. It's practically raw. Huh? I pick up a different lump. This one consisting of a fruity flesh around a hard core. I'm wondering if they're gonna cut to normal vision and it's gonna be just like, so... <laughs> and so, Fuminori picked up the disembodied eyeball. Tearing a chunk off with my mouth. Ugh, and I find it has a similar taste to the last one. Hey, are you okay? That's a eyeball. Yeah, even I can eat this. In fact, it's good. Oh, fucking hell. Really? <laughs> oh, that's awful. At first, Sai looks dumbstruck, but then bursts out laughing. So this is what you like? I feel stupid for going to all that trouble. Is this what you always eat, Sai? Yeah, though it's been a while since I've had one so big. I usually catch them in a nearby park. I mean... You're really not gonna question this. You're just gonna be like, oh, I guess it's food. It tastes like fruit. It looks like fruit. I mean, it's not like I have some kind of mental disorder that is affecting my perception of uh, anything I see, taste, touch. Fucking anything. I mean, it's probably just fruit. I mean... <laughs> Jesus. There's an impressive nature preserve not too far from here. I've never heard about fruits like these growing there. But, well, of course. They only look like fruits to me. They're really something else. Ask what they are. Be not a complete crazy idiot psychopath completely addicted to this girl. Ask. Sorry, I already ate the best parts. Oh god. That's... Oh, you're not gonna ask. Fucking dipshit. That's okay. There's always next time and now we can eat together. Yeah! Saya so seems really happy. I'm happy too, of course. Eating someone. Oh no, I'm sorry. Eating with someone is much more fun than eating alone and makes the food taste better too. Oh god. There's plenty still left. It'll keep chilled for two or three days, though it won't taste as good. Then we'd better start putting it away. Sealing the small fruits in Tupperware and the large ones in pots and bowls, Sire and I store the remaining food in the refrigerator. Thinking of tomorrow's dinner fills me with anticipation. Fucking hell, you dipshit. I feel that little by little I'm starting to regain the joy of living. Oh my god, can you, could you make a character seem more fucking psychopathic? And everyone's gonna be like, I wonder where Omi went. Hey, what was looking for Fuminari? But like, I don't know where she gone now. Uh, so I will guide me with her. I can live on. Oh my god, this is just. This makes me feel unclean. I need to go fucking scrub myself with bleach or something. True scary stories, hospital edition. The monster in the university hospital. Oh my god, this is folklore about her. Okay, I need like a kind of presenter voice. A research student relates his shocking experience at Tokyo's most prestigious hospital. Will you believe him or not? 
strange things start happening at the hospital around the end of last spring. It began with patients waking in the middle of the night, screaming. They all spoke of terrifying nightmares, and many of them had to be sedated. Some patients even transferred to other hospitals because of it. The weird thing was that they all... They'd all had exactly the same dream. A dream about some horribly disgusting monster staring down at them from their bedside. But the really strange stuff started happening after that. There used to be a lot of stray cats around campus, looking for scraps from the students. One day, the cats suddenly disappeared. And it wasn't that they'd stopped coming, it was more like they'd vanished from the area entirely. And then people stopped walking their dogs around. According to the rumors, dogs were refusing to go anywhere near the school. Eventually, things started to go missing in the hospital. Organs, to be precise. Transplant organs kept disappearing from storage. Some people came close to losing their jobs over it. And it wasn't just two or three times that it happened. They tried to keep it from the research students, but they, we heard that it we heard that it was a lot worse than that. People started saying that there was something living in the hospital. The janitors would find strange messes that could only be made in the middle of the night. Traces of something that had crawled down the hallway. Or st weird stains that seemed to be caused by something dripping through the ceiling. The late shift nurses talked about hearing strange noises. On the same nights, the patients woke up screaming. There's one last story. One you can never mention inside the hospital. One day, the obstetrics department went crazy. They said a newborn had disappeared in the night. If that were true, the police would have come and it would have been all over the news. But they say some of the big shots managed to make it all go away. That's just a rumor, of course. These strange incidents suddenly stopped towards the end of summer. Now there are almost no patients complaining of nightmares, and the cats have started coming back to the campus. But still, what happened to the hospital that summer? Even now, just thinking about it gives me the creeps, which isn't a very professional thing to say on an official documentary TV show thing. Awesome. That was bad for my voice. I think I'm gonna actually, after the, those lovely stories, we're gonna um, end it there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week for more cannibalistic delights. 